I want to have a conversation about something. So in the likely event that you haven't noticed, there's kind of something major going on around what I guess we've all silently agreed to call Film Twitter. In what might be an uncanny, perfect storm of events, you have Patrick H. Willem's video editorial on why plot holes should stop being the cornerstone of popular movie criticism, which engendered a lot of discussion, especially after popular review channel Your Movie Sucks drew attention to it with his lengthy response. Lo and behold, just as film Twitter starts brewing an argument over the validity of channels like YMS and which approach to appraisal is more valid, the even bigger review channel Red Letter Media poured fuel to the fire by releasing their feature-length review of what's without exaggeration the most polarizing and divisive movie of the last decade and a half, Star Wars The Last Jedi. Keep in mind that I haven't watched that video because the one thing that surpasses my love of The Last Jedi is how sick to goddamn death I am of making and or seeing arguments of its quality. But it can't go without being discussed. I started writing this video with the intent to talk primarily about my stance on the debate about plot holes, how much worth they should carry in appraising a story, what they even are since not many people can seem to agree, etc, etc, etc. But honestly, I think it makes for a much more interesting discussion to use this whole thing as a lens through which to view changing attitudes toward movie criticism. So I'm just going to do that instead, by which I mean mainly I'm going to focus on my personal opinion about the approaches taken by many of these channels. Really, this whole video is just my excuse to throw my two cents in, in regards to where internet discussion of the quality of media is going or should go. You see, these two videos, or at least what they represent, are an almost perfect one-two punch of diametrically opposed ideas, with certain sects taking each to be something of a symbol of the opposing sides of the argument. And the reason I choose to write about these is that, for lack of a better way to put it, I'm sensing something of a tectonic shift in the landscape. Quote-unquote overly nitpicky video-based critics, or those perceived as reflexively negative or searching for reasons to be negative, have always faced a share of their own criticism from certain camps, myself often included, but something feels different about this wave of open rejections of the, I guess it's best to call it, angry critical nerd branch of popular producers. We'll see how long this lasts, but it feels like people are coming out in droves to really cry foul on the approach for the first time. Like I'm witnessing the beginnings of a breaking point of what's been slowly and quietly building as the unquestioned standard for how popular figures talk about media in a video format ever since it was incepted by the likes of Angry Video Game Nerd in 2005. And keep in mind, I'm really wary of the idea that this phenomenon could be much more common than I'm giving it credit for, and that this could be me reading way too much into something that doesn't really mean all that much since I'm being exposed to this for the first time, having not really used my Twitter for anything, let alone in-depth media discussion until earlier this year. The biggest names that I'm aware of to either take part in or otherwise be brought up in this debate are, of course, Patrick and RLM, but also Movie Bob, Mahler, Your Movie Sucks, Lindsay Ellis, Doug Walker, Movies with Mikey, and of course, everyone's favorite, Cinema Sins. Also, heads up, while I'm totally gonna tag all you guys in the inevitable Twitter post that I make, assuming I scrounge up the stones to actually post this thing, for the sake of exposure and validating my incredibly fragile ego, please save us all a lot of time and don't bother making an hour plus long response video to this. I'm not gonna watch it. Probably. Unless you really want me to, I don't want to be rude. Part of me is in a rush to get this video done so I can document my feelings on the matter as it unfolds, but another part of me is tempted to hold back and wait a few days or weeks or months or years to see if I really am just blowing things out of proportion and this all blows over. Don't get me wrong, I don't expect any of the channels that I'm going to mention here to take any kind of hit or some malarkey, nor do I really wish them to, except for Cinema Sins. But I think the discussion of all this stuff relative to each other signals a coming change in how viewers might appraise the dominant forms of movie criticism, however slow and subtle it may continue to be. All of these content creators are popular, more popular than I will ever be talking about the same kinds of material. But it doesn't take much looking to see that it's overwhelmingly the more negative skewing brands like Nostalgia Critic, Mr. Plinkett, and YMS which are the most popular. It's easy to see why this happens. Negativity is a cathartic and easy feeling to indulge in, and people like the confirmation bias of having something they hate dismantled in a way that's thorough, if not always nuanced. Plus, to paraphrase Movie Bob, when something is received positively, it's often treated as if the reasons why it's good are obvious and don't need to be expanded on, while a whipping boy is always intriguing to go back to. Plus, plus, depending on your taste and, in the case of Plinkett, how willing you are to stomach incredibly abrasive and pitch-black comedy, all of these parties usually manage to be decently entertaining, if not occasionally 
occasionally uproariously funny in the process of taking a movie down. It's unfortunately just harder to be funny in the process of building something up. And also, people watch CinemaSins for some reason. I don't know. Not only does this type of content get the most attention, but it's the especially negative voices that are often held as the gold standard of what makes a good and bad movie and a good and bad movie review. I'm 100% guilty of propagating this mindset in practice, in case you think I'm condemning anyone for liking these channels, by the way. I may have been, let's say, unimpressed with their Force Awakens video and totally skipped The Last Jedi one, but I maintain that the Plinket reviews of the Star Wars prequel trilogy are a joy to watch and a valuable instructor on aspects of storytelling. Nostalgia Critic is a brand I've kept up with since its early, early days ten years ago, and watching episodes with my mom and sister has been a family pastime for nearly that long as well. Doc Walker and his co-writer brother Rob at the very least understand the extent to which film is an emotional medium and have gotten better with time at addressing the actual, non-pedantic faults that a movie might have. YMS is a decent-sized influence on how I present my own reviews, especially when I do get negative about something. However, what I've long since stopped doing is treating these creators like they're authorities on quality. Doug Walker makes silly, funny, occasionally somewhat smart videos about a live-action cartoon version of himself getting tortured by bad movies. But he and Rob have proven time and again that they just aren't the best film critics, often failing to retain even the simplest of details about a movie they watch, and more often providing very basic surface readings of the text. That's not even getting into some evidence of downright incompetent producing on their part. Red Litter Media put a crap ton of work and a decent amount of creativity into most of their videos, but they also can be frequently dismissive or shallow towards certain material. I'll grant YMS that I enjoy quite a lot of their videos, and when they nitpick the crap out of something, I get the impression that they're at least being genuine, and that the stuff they harp on truly drag them out of whatever piece of media they're talking about without them being able to help it. I don't get the impression from Adam that he's looking for problems, even if, for as entertaining as I often find his stuff, the things that bother him in a movie are often things that it would never occur to me to notice or care about. That's not to say that I'll never agree with Adam on what is or isn't a bad movie, in fact, I often do. But sit down and watch a YMS review, and a minority of the criticisms he lobs at a movie will actually have anything to do with what does and doesn't make for an effective narrative. The stuff Adam gets hung up on in movies, granted often exaggerated for comedic effect, will more often than not come down to silly acting moments, minor or background errors in continuity between shots, poor sound mixing, bad blocking effects quality, see what I'm getting at, it's lots of technical stuff, which are often so small and quick as to be fairly innocuous to most people, even if done poorly. Are these all perfectly legitimate things to hold against a movie? Absolutely, but for me personally, they're the kind of stuff that's of absolute bare minimum importance for a storytelling medium. Plus, there's also that really dumb thing that he said about Citizen Kane, but the new whatever, whatever, I'm not getting into that. I briefly mentioned Mahler a while back, and he is perhaps my least favorite example out of all the critics talked about here, short of CinemaSins, because Mahler's work at the very least is trying. But my issue with Mahler isn't any of the things he chooses to criticize, or the way in which he chooses to present himself, or even the interminable length of his videos like it is for some people. No, my issues with Mahler stem from what I see as a profoundly unhelpful and counterintuitive philosophy of film criticism. Look, I'm not gonna go as far as Patrick Willems did in his Plot Holes video and claim that anyone is watching movies wrong, but I do absolutely believe there is a wrong way to critique movies, and Mahler's way is it. Keep in mind, I'm not extensively familiar with Mahler's work. I watched his Black Panther review and hated it, I watched his Infinity War review and loved it, and that's literally it. But I've had the privilege of conversing with the guy on a couple of occasions, and I just cannot get behind his deliberately clinical, emotionless, every movie can be broken down to nuts and bolts whose merit can be objectively measured, I dare say robotic stance on movie appraisal. Hey guys, here's the secret to why more than one film critic exists in the world at any given time. Every criticism of every film is informed formed by individual biases. No exceptions. Any criticism you could lob at anything, from this joke didn't land, to this character is unlikable, to this shot composition doesn't work, to this music cue is inappropriate, to this acting performance is bad, are all informed, knowingly or otherwise, by personal experience and standards specific to you as formed by your background. When Mahler says something to the effect of, I only dislike a movie if there's objectively more to hate than there is to like in it, 
which is a sentiment that he's expressed in an audio commentary of Civil War, which I happen to listen in on, I can't help but find that unconscionably pretentious. Mahler's approach to the movies he reviews is to adamantly refuse the idea that any of the points he raises are rooted in anything other than cold, hard, indisputable fact, and I fail to see any value in approaching movies from the perspective of a machine trying to place an arguable value, or worse, the perspective of some all-knowing authority who totally just knows the correct way to make movies or tell stories better than anyone who happens to think differently than they do. Okay, stop right there. Must calm myself. For as much as I stand by what I said, I don't think Mahler is a bad guy or anything. He seems perfectly nice and reasonable. And at the very least, he's open to civil debate, and readily admits that his branch of criticism isn't the only valid one that exists. All of these people seem like nice enough guys, and on some level I think that's really why I wanted to make this video. Plus, it's not like I don't have issues with the presentation or even just basic opinion-based disagreements with the critics and film voices I have listed as more positive. I often disagree with Movie Bob, for instance, especially about the Spider-Man movies, and for as smart and insightful as his writing can get, he also has pretenses to the so-called objective quality of things that I don't agree with. Literally, as I was in the middle of writing the script, I got into a pretty lengthy series of tweets about how much I disagreed with Movies with Mikey on his Avengers Infinity War video. A video which is brilliant, despite my not sharing any of its opinions precisely because of how openly emotional, yet also perfectly rational it is. And I think I might have accidentally come off as a big jerk in the process. I'm really sorry, Mikey, I didn't mean for that to happen. Can you tell I have strong opinions on Marvel movies? Hell, getting back to Patrick's plot holes video, while I agree with the broader sentiment being expressed there, I think Patrick either ignores or purposefully dismisses a lot of valid reasons that people might have to say that plot holes detract from a movie's overall quality, and even misrepresents a lot of specific examples of plot holes and why people have problems with them from certain movies. And Lindsay Ellis... Okay, I have absolutely zero negative things to say about Lindsay Ellis. Her channel is one of the best on YouTube, and you should be watching her right now. I've rambled on a lot here, and I guess my main point, if I have one, is that it seems like for the first time, hard lines are being drawn between different approaches to the same content that I've been following with more or less equal closeness for years. The current film Twitter discourse is fascinating, but also kind of sad. I have at least some good things to say about every content creator I've mentioned in this video, except Cinema Sins, and I've got to admit, seeing people basically break into factions over what constitutes proper criticism to the point where we completely dismiss people who are either just trying to entertain or are otherwise capable of owning up to the subjective nature of their arguments, or are just putting in an honest effort into their content makes me kind of uneasy. Are the likes of YMS, RLM, Mahler, Doug Walker, and Cinema Sins guilty of propagating an approach to media criticism that ultimately makes the medium and discourse less tolerable? Do they take the focus of discussion about an often ethereal, personal, storytelling medium away from the personal and storytelling elements by harping on things like logic or surface elements of presentation, or by packaging their work purposefully or otherwise as correct in the face of any differing opinion? Is this a problem even if it can be entertaining? Is it a problem even if I think there's merit to criticizing a movie for plot holes, even extensively so? The answer to all of this is, yeah, probably. But if we're going to continue our approach toward the creation of a hard line between legit constructive criticism and mass appeal reflexively negative gotcha criticism, what I don't think is that we should then toss out all of these creators and their work with the garbage. Maybe instead, let's just appeal to their legions of fans to not instinctively treat their take on whatever it is they talk about it as the final word or some kind of gospel. Except Cinema Sins, we can totally toss Cinema Sins out with the garbage. There's a big part of me that thinks maybe the only reason I'm glomming so hard onto this split and the emergence of more and more noteworthy voices condemning the more entrenched, reflexively negative criticism is as a sign that the landscape is going through a kind of puberty, and that by extension I myself am maturing as a viewer of film alongside it. It's tempting to think that film criticism is moving to a better, less rigid place than it was. I like to think that my perception of both film and film criticism as mediums is better for having each and every one of these voices in it. And it'll be fascinating to see how the discourse looks in another few years or so, assuming we all live that long. If the patented internet mob mentality can be quelled and the common consciousness can learn to be okay with not looking to one kind of voice to be the standard for both opinion and approach to forming said opinion. Or maybe the whole film industry will be single-handedly consumed by Disney and melted by its terrible Disney stomach acids. Who knows? Okay, just take my word for it, you're gonna wanna stick around for a second. This was a bit of an impromptu thing, and I hope I said at least one thing in this video that was worth saying. 
If not, no, well, this can just be sealed off as a quaint little personal ramble which I am entitled to make, seeing as how it is, in fact, my channel. All the channels I've discussed in this video are linked in the description except Cinema Sins, and I wholeheartedly recommend you check each of them out. Hey, maybe even come back to this video after you do and let me know what you find to be the pros and cons of how each channel handles their critical approach. And for that matter, what you think is the best approach to critiquing movies. That said, I suppose for the sake of completion, here's a little postscript regarding Cinema Sins, inserted here at the end because I honestly couldn't find a good place for it in the rest of the video. CinemaSins is cancer to film criticism, to the point that I would find it personally irresponsible to promote their channel by providing an easy access link to them in my own description. I may fundamentally disagree with Mahler's philosophy of appraisal, but at least he has a philosophy. CinemaSins is the work of a hack, with no care for movies as a storytelling medium or art form whatsoever. Channels with far more legit content have already made a name for themselves beating this dead horse. And look, if you find CinemaSins brand of humor funny, then... Fine, I guess, but even if it parades around under the veneer of comedy or satire, CinemaSins is a channel held up as legit criticism by millions, with seemingly no motive for talking about anything beyond clickbait. The quote-unquote character of CinemaSins Jeremy is not just a pedantic nitpicker, but someone who literally has no standards for good storytelling or filmmaking, by which I mean he literally will completely change his values for what he does or doesn't like in a movie, oftentimes in the same video in order to pad out the runtime. Worse than going into a movie with the intent to find a mountain of flaws is outright lying about a movie or making things up in order to manufacture flaws, both of which the channel is guilty of in spades. CinemaSins videos are pushed by their fans as legit critiques of film just as much as RLM or YMS or Nostalgia Critic, and I'm sorry, no! I don't care if you think CinemaSins was meant to be taken seriously. By the very nature of its popularity, its effects and implications on widespread movie criticisms must be taken seriously. This channel is quote-unquote criticism from a figure who believes in nothing. And that's not just lazy, but an insult to film critique as a profession, as a method of discourse, and even as a modest hobby. Screw CinemaSins.